It's boring. This is a nice mix. At some point, I will own T Row. There's been enthusiasm for the stock. These are the things I like about T Row guaranteed money in all the time. I love it. T Row Price. Guys, this is a company I've talked about a lot in the last year or two. The reason I like this company is when I looked at their financials. So, first off, they do a lot of 401ks. Why do I like 401ks? Well, every week, every payroll, people are putting money in their 401k. It's this automatic savings that happens. And I love that because they're getting guaranteed money in all the time. Now, I looked at their, their 10K one time, and it, it wasn't majority of their revenue, but a big portion of their revenue are asset management fees. But they also have a very set flat portion of their revenue coming in, which is good as stocks fall. Think about it this way. A lot of these wealth management companies charge a flat fee, charge a set fee, like 1% to manage money. So as stocks go up, that money goes up. But as stocks go down, the revenue goes down. This is a nice mix. They have flat fees, thinking like $50 per person per month or whatever it is that they get to charge. So as stocks go up, the revenues won't go up as much. But on the flip side, as stocks go down, they won't go down as much. Interestingly enough, this shows you how much people are watching our videos. Someone reached out to us in the branding world and said, hey, you have the wrong, uh, you have, you, we have a new logo for T-Row, make sure it's in your system. It wasn't the wrong one, but the video was a long time ago and they said, hey, do you mind changing it out? It's pretty fun to see those things happen because it makes us realize that we're getting out there to the right people. So let's pull up T-Row in our software. T-Row price. All right, wow, this is down a lot in the last, from the all-time high. So the all-time high was August 30th, 2021 at 224. The recent low was $93. Look at this, guys. Look at that big drop. That's over 50% drop. That's a 60% drop from today. 60% drop from the peak, I mean. Now today, the price is 118. So it's rebounded since then, as you've seen in the market. Look at three months in the market, 15% up for the stock. I don't know what the market's up right now. I don't think it's 15%, but the point is there's been enthusiasm for the stock. These are the things I like about T Row. One, market cap, enterprise value. It's the same. And the difference between these two are basically the cash against the debt. So they basically have no debt when you factor in their cash. Two, low double digit PE on the one year and five year basis. Three, look at this gross margin and look at these bottom line margins. Huge. Four, Return on invested capital, 18.4%. Guys, forward dividend yield, 4.3%. Does it get any better than this? And that dividend pays out about, is less than half of last year's free cash flow and about half their five-year average. Everything is sounding great. Let's look at their eight pillars to see overall how the company is doing. All eight check marks. Now keep in mind, guys, please do not buy the company just because it has eight checks and because I like it. You don't know what price I'm buying it at. You don't know anything about what I'm doing. At some point, I will own T Row and I have puts at lower prices on T Row, but I'm trying to teach you how to fish here. I'm not trying to give you fish. So if you're just looking for somebody to tell you what to buy, they're probably not going to give you good advice. There are a ton of other garbage channels out there to go follow to get that. If you want to lose 80, 90% of your money, by all means, do that. But if you want to learn a process for yourself to learn how to evaluate companies for the long run, this is the channel to go to. So let's take a look at uh, income statement for T Row. So look at this revenue growth, 3.3 billion. It's over double in the last 10 years. But here's what I want to show you. Look at the last crash. This is back in 08, 09. 1.7, 2.1. I just go to the wrong line. 2.3, 1.75, 2.26, 2.7. So it did fall in the crash. Makes sense. But it didn't fall. 50% like stocks did. Net income, 400, 500, 630, 660, 305, and then back up again. Still growing again. I love it. Very good balance sheet. They're going to fall during bad times, understandably so. Their revenue is going to fall because they do have a portion of the revenue that will go along with the market rise and fall. Okay? So I still love this a lot. Let's see what analysts are saying. Analysts are not expecting a lot of growth in the EPS for the company. Look at this. Very little growth. There aren't a lot of analysts here. And this is our data feed. And there's plenty of other analysts out there following T. Row Price, but not a lot of growth here. I love it. It's boring. People don't want to see this. That's what makes the stock low. Revenue growth, only one year of revenue growth assumptions. Okay, we're, you know, it's basically nothing to look at. So how do we determine what to pay? So I look at T. Row and think to myself, this is a company I want to own for a very, very long period of time. It fits my first two questions. One, do I think it's going to be around for the foreseeable future? Absolutely. Barring some major change in government, even then, I still think they're going to be around. 
Two, do I think they're going to make more money or less money in that foreseeable future than they do today? Answer, yes. Even if stocks do what I think they're going to do, they're still going to add money every single month to their assets under management. They're still going to charge for those people who are still saving, and it's a long-term play. So the third question, can I pay a reasonable price for those assumptions today that gives me an adequate return on my money? That's the question we need to ask. That's the final question that's usually the hardest one. So we go to our stock analyzer tool. Now, guys, since I want to own this for the foreseeable future, I'm going to put a 20-year analysis in there. I'm going to do the longest analysis imaginable in our stock analyzer tool. It goes from one to 20 years. If that doesn't feel comfortable for you, that's okay. We have 1.3 million times this thing was used last year alone by our users in the community. 1.3 million times. And I can assure you, people change that analysis. I would hear people say, Paul, I did a five-year. Paul, I did a 12-year. Paul, I did a three-year. It all depends on what your goals are for that investment. I like to like to look at investments I want to hold for 10 or 20 years or longer. So I do those 20 year analysis. So the question becomes, what are my assumptions going to be? Okay, well, let's think here. The market over the next 10, 12 years is probably gonna be pretty difficult, but people are going to add money every month, which is going to increase. They're also going to get more and more accounts in, which will add the, 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 use, the number of people on there, et cetera. So I'm going to be conservative and I'm going to call it 5% revenue growth on the low side, 10% middle, 15% high. So you might be looking at the 15% growth thing. This is absurd. It is absurd. However, sometime in the next 20 years, you know, I'm not going to do 15%. I'm sorry. I can't do that. I'm going to do five, nine, and five, eight and a half, and 12. I think 15 is way too high. I don't think it's even, I don't think they're going to do that at all. So I'm just going to go five, eight and a half, and 12. You just saw right here how I changed my mind in the middle of this. You might sit there and say, well, Paul, what kind of process is that? That's the art of investing. So I'm sitting there. Like, honestly, I, would, I wouldn't blame you if you did four, eight, and 12. Actually, let's do four, eight, and 12. I love it. Might, might as well be a little bit more conservative. Do I think they're going to grow more than 4% a year for the next 20 years? I do. Because... I think the market's going to do better than 4% a year for the next 20 years. And I think they're going to add more people. I think four is where really, really low. That's okay. Profit margin. Look at these high profit margins. I'm going to do 28, 31, 34. Free cash flow. As you can see here though, free cash flow is actually higher except for in the last, well, actually no, just the last year. Okay. So let's focus on these numbers. Um, let's see here. Let's go with 27, 29, 31. Now PE. Look at the current PE of 13. That's the last 12 months and, and the price of free cash flow of 10. It means they're showing more free cash flow than, than profit earnings. All right, this is the hard one, guys. I'm gonna do 14, 15 and a half and 17. And the reason being is they have a high return on invested capital so we can justify a higher PE. Nope, changing it again. I love this. I'm gonna go 15, 16, 17. Because the average over long periods of time is between 15 and 16. So I'm okay. I've already been conservative here. I'm okay with that. Now I'm gonna do something different here. In desired return, you can get nine or 10% from investing in a long-term ETF, right? Following the market, you'll get between nine and 10% return. So to me, that's kind of like your baseline. However, here, I really think I beat this up a lot. I don't think tw I don't think 4% is a reasonable growth rate for 20 years. I don't think 28%. So usually I go 12, 14. I always start at 12. I'm actually going to start at 10 here. Because to me, if I can buy this business where my worst case is still getting a 10% return, I'd be very happy. If you told me right now, Paul, you buy T row and you're going to make it, you're going to, you're going to absolutely, the worst case scenario is 10%. I absolutely would do that. Absolutely. Now, as it gets higher, I'm going to make bigger assumptions. I'm going to go 12 and a half and I'm going to go 15% return on the high side. So guys, what's going to pop up is six numbers that are based on multiples of low, middle, and high on earnings and free cash flow. The key here is if it's all green or big chunk green, it doesn't mean go out and buy. Make sure, you're, make sure all of your assumptions are true. Make sure that go in the community. Join the, even if it's for one stock, pay the one month, join the community. It'll be worth it. If you're going to spend a few thousand dollars on a stock or more, is it worth spending 30 bucks to have a conversation with people to get their ideas in there? Because I guarantee you the thousands of people in here, somebody's looked up T row and had a conversation about it. So boom. And look at this all green 140, 260, 200. Now, one thing before you look, go away. I want to show you what I think the stocks are worth. Remember, 10% is our value based on, that's basically intrinsic value. So based on my assumptions above, if I was right on these, the stock actually today is worth between 140 and 500. You might sit there and say, how is that possible? Well, stocks have fallen a lot lately and stocks are voting machines. On the short run, it's going to be a bad thing when people don't want stocks. This company... When it was high flying, these are a lot of big assumptions to make here, but we want to have margin of safety. That's why we need more than 10%. We need more than 10% because the, the more assumptions, the higher assumptions we make, the more likely we are to be wrong. So we need that margin of safety. So doing 12, 10, 12 and a half and 15, 
you're still going to do great. If you believe these numbers, go do your research. Don't buy it just because it says all green here. But I love this. Take a look at it. And if you believe in this company and it falls even further, which it's likely to do, and you like the, the numbers, all you have to do is buy more. Thanks very much for your time, guys. The more you learn, the less you fear.